Value is not what you think it is. The first lesson that any tutorial will teach you about color is that value is the most important thing, which is most definitely true. But I have watched many videos on color theory and I was shocked to see that no one explains what value actually is and how we can accurately predict and measure it. Let me show you what I mean. Here is a table of colors. Each column has the same brightness and saturation, and it's only the hue that changes. Now, let's look at the value of each color by converting it to grayscale. Despite the brightness and saturation being the same, the values of each color are completely different. What if I were to tell you that this phenomenon actually makes perfect sense? In this video, which is the second video in my series, The Science of Art, I'm going to explain the science behind how we humans see color and value. Make sure you hang around until the end, because I'm going to show you how we can apply everything we're going to learn in this video to our art. Most artists will tell you that hue, saturation and brightness all work together to determine the value. This isn't quite true. Yet, this is the way most artists are taught to see color. Yes, if you change your hue, saturation and brightness, your value is going to change. But this is a byproduct of something else entirely. Let me put it this way. I want to make a milkshake out of milk, strawberries and ice cream. And I want to control the sugar levels of this milkshake. Yes, if I change the quantity of each ingredient, the sugar levels will change. But it's the sugar in each ingredient that determines the sugar levels. Wouldn't it be easier to determine the sugar levels of my milkshake if I knew exactly how much sugar was in each ingredient? It's the same with value. What if I were to tell you that there's a way to easily judge the value of your color? The answer is actually very simple. But to understand this, we first need to understand what value actually is. Value is generally accepted as being how light or dark a color or hue is. And because darkness is just an absence of light, we can adjust this definition slightly. Value is how light a color is. However, I want to adjust this definition one more time. Value is how light we perceive a color to be. This may seem like an insignificant detail, but in my opinion, it's actually the key to understanding value. To understand the subtlety, let's use another one of our senses as an example. Imagine you're listening to music through headphones and you see someone come up to you and start talking to you. You can see their mouths moving as they speak, but you can't hear a thing they're saying. Without lowering the volume of your music, you take off your headphones person repeats what they're saying and you can now hear them with your music playing softly in the background. The person isn't speaking any louder, in fact they're probably speaking more softly and the volume of your music hasn't changed either. But you can now hear the person and your music has become distant to your ears. The only thing that has actually changed is what sounds are hitting your ears. In other words, your perception of the sounds has changed. While we have a large degree of control over the sounds we perceive, we don't have as much control over the light and color we perceive. You can think about it another way. Humans don't see the same way animals do. For example, bees, like many other insects, can't see red. But they can see ultraviolet light, which humans can't see. The light isn't different for bees, it's just our perception of it that's different. So, what is color and how do we perceive it? Light is made up of waves. Each wave has a different wavelength. The wavelength is the distance between the top of each wave. Light sources, such as the sun, emit these light waves. And when light waves hit an object, some wavelengths are absorbed and converted to heat, while others bounce off the object and hit our eyes. This is why you feel warmer in black clothing, because black is produced when all the light waves are absorbed and converted to heat. Our eyes then interpret each wavelength as a different color. However, we can't see all wavelengths. 
we can only see the wavelengths in what's known as the visible spectrum. Radio waves, microwaves and infrared waves have too low a wavelength for our eyes to detect, while ultraviolet rays, X-rays and gamma rays have too high a wavelength. But, most importantly, we don't detect all wavelengths in the visible spectrum equally. And this is why we see colours with the same brightness and saturation as having different values. Inside our eyes, we have light detectors called rods and cones. We rely upon the rods in low light situations. These rods only detect value, which is why we don't see colour at night. The cones are what detect colour, and these are only stimulated in brighter light, such as during the day. We have three different types of cones, which are all stimulated by different wavelengths, or, in other words, different colours. The first type is the S-cone. This is most sensitive to short wavelengths, or, in other words, blue. Then we have the M-cones, which are most sensitive to medium wavelengths, or simply green. Finally, we have the L-cones, or long wavelength cones, which are most sensitive to red. However, notice how there is a lot of overlap between the M-cones and the L-cones. Essentially, we have three different types of cones, each foreseeing primarily the colours red, green and blue. But mainly green, then red, and then blue. This is why the colour green is the key to understanding value. If we think about it from an evolutionary standpoint, it actually makes sense. For millions of years, our ancestors lived in the wild, where observing your surroundings was essential to our survival, and nature is predominantly green. As a result, us humans have evolved to have eyes which are incredibly sensitive to the colour green, and that's why today we can still see green better than any other colour in the spectrum. But there are so many more colours than what we can see displayed here on the visible spectrum. There's colours such as white or pink. There's different hues, brightnesses and saturations. This is because it's rarely only a single cone that's stimulated when we see a colour. It's mainly different combinations of all three. For example, when we're seeing white, all three cones are fully stimulated, because white is a combination of all colours, and this is why it's the brightest all three cones are perceiving a maximum amount of light. When we're seeing yellow, both the green cones and the red cones are being highly stimulated. This is why yellow is brighter than red or green. If we look at pink, the red cone is being highly stimulated and the other two cones are also very stimulated to create white, but a bit less than the red cone. But don't worry, I'm going to show you an easy way to judge value based on this because there is an easy way. Let's take a look at something that already knows how to convert an image from color to grayscale, a computer. Now, I have a confession to make. I'm not a professional artist and I have no artistic training whatsoever. I actually work in computer science and more specifically in multimedia processing. So, I actually learned to see colour like a computer does the first day I started my master's degree, which was before I took up art. And don't worry, I'm not going to start spewing out long mathematical formulas for colour conversion. Because here's a secret about science. Most of the time, it's actually not that difficult. Some people just like to make it seem difficult. In fact, the way a computer sees colour and value is shockingly simple. Remember how we said that different wavelengths correspond to different colours? Well, here's the trick computers use. Our brains can't tell the difference between a single wavelength corresponding to yellow or two different wavelengths corresponding to green and red, which, when combined, make up yellow. This, of course, applies to any colour. So a computer's colour spectrum doesn't look like ours, it actually looks like this. The computer only sees red, green and blue. Let's see what this means intuitively. Artists always tend to talk about the different hue, saturation and brightness levels, which we can find in any digital art program. 
but everyone forgets about the most important statistics. The RGB values, which stand for the red, green and blue values. So, let's take a look at these statistics. The RGB scales all go from 0 to 255. A total of 256 values may seem arbitrary, but believe me, it does make sense. If I were to put two of the three scales at 0 and vary the other colour, 0 would be pure black and 256 would be the most saturated form of the colour. If all the scales were 256, we get white. They work just like the cones in our eyes. And by combining different values, we create different colours. But how do we convert RGB scales to a single value? First, how can we actually measure value? We can also measure it on a scale of 0 to 255, where 0 is pure black and 255 is pure white. Remember how we said we perceive green better than any other colour? Well, a computer that takes this into account when it tries to imitate human perception. So the actual formula a computer uses is this. But don't worry, we're going to simplify this. So this means that the value of a colour is made up of about 30% of its quantity of red, 60% of the quantity of green, and 10% of the quantity of blue. Enough with the maths, let's see what this means intuitively. Here we have our colour wheel, where all the colours are at their maximum saturation. What happens if we convert this to grayscale? Our lightest saturated colour is yellow and the darkest is blue. If I bring all three colours up to the maximum, we mix them all together and we get white. But let's go around the colour wheel and see what happens. But first, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who has liked one of my videos or subscribed to my channel, because you guys really do help me out so much and I appreciate every single one of you. And if you've enjoyed this video, consider checking out my first video in the science of art, where I explain scientifically why things are creepy and how we can apply this to art. So, starting with green, our value will be at 60% on the value scale, where 0 is pure black and 100% is pure white. Now, let's add some red to it to make it yellow. Notice how it's become lighter because I've added value to the green by using the red, but I haven't taken away any of the green, and so it's at about 90% on the value scale. So let's take away the green. It's now at about 30% on the value scale, so it's pretty dark. We can lighten it up by adding some blue without taking away the red, and this gives us purple which is at about 40% of the value scale. If we take away the red, we're left with the darkest saturated colour, which is blue. As you can probably guess, it's at about 10% on the value scale. Now, if we add some green, it brings it up to about 70% of the value scale. Taking away the blue, we're back to green. Now, this may not seem very intuitive at first, but next time you're drawing, if you're doing it digitally, keep an eye on the RGB values. If you're drawing traditionally, try to take note of the quantity of green in each of your colours. It'll soon become second nature. 